And now we will have our Republican candidates for Secretary of State. Welcome candidates, Commissioner of the State Lands, John Thurston, and State Representative Trevor Down. Commissioner Thurston, you may now make your opening statement. Well, thank you for having me, and um, it's good to be in Saline County, not across the state. I'm a Saline County native, fifth generation. I still live in Saline County. And um, I'm, I was elected in 2010 as the first Republican Commissioner of State Lands. Prior to that, I was in the ministry for 13 years. And if you would have asked me uh, 10 years ago what I would be doing in 2018, I would have told you the ministry. Uh, I still consider what I'm doing in public service as ministry. You know, there's people run for office for all types of reasons, uh, but I, I have run and, and running still uh, but because I believe I can make a difference and have made a difference. Um, in state government, particularly the Commissioner of State Lands Office, and uh, running for Secretary of State, and look forward to uh, answering the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Representative Drown, you may now begin your opening statement. Well, my name is Trevor Drown, and I am the state representative for District 68. That encompasses parts of both Pope and Van Buren County in the middle of the state. I am a veteran of Operation Enduring Freedom Afghanistan and the Horn of Africa, where I served as a Green Beret. My service to this state and nation started at the age of 17, not much older than you all sitting right there. Joined the Army National Guard two weeks after I graduated high school, hopped on a plane headed to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. That led me into my service overseas, and then that in turn led me into my service as a state representative. It is because of that service that you know, in the beginning, no one had to ask me to serve. Then I was asked to run for state representative and in turn have been asked to run for secretary of state. So it is because of that that I look forward to, to being your next secretary of state and, and continuing my service for you for many years to come. Thank you, Representative Drown. First question will be addressed towards you. How long have you been a registered member of your party? Have you ever been registered as a member of another party? If so, why did you change? And what are primary concerns or changes that you plan to address if you are elected? So I've only been a registered Republican since the year 2013. Before that, I've been voting. I registered to vote and voted absentee for the first time at the age of 18 from Fort Rucker, Alabama. I've been registered as, I think it's optional, on the, uh, for all these years, just like about nine, over 90% of the voters in the state to include many Republicans uh, that are currently holding office. It's no fault of their own, it's just the, the system, it seems to fall through the cracks. In 2013, I was approached by two of the strongest Republicans there in the River Valley, and uh, Dr. John Montgomery and Phil Carruth. And when I ran for this office, I ran as a Republican because it's, I've always voted that way, and they, the, the Republican platform is more closely related to who I am as a conservative, and that is the reason that I am a, a, a Republican. Thank you for that, Representative Brown. Commissioner Thurston, how long have you been a registered member of your party? Have you ever been registered as a member of another party? If so, why did you change, and what are primary concerns or changes that you plan to address if you are elected? Right. Um, I, too, had always voted Republican. Um, probably joined the party, began volunteering in the party in 2009. Uh, I, have, I have never been a part of another party. Uh, even though, I guess here in Arkansas, you know, we were all probably raised Democrat, which I was, and my grandmother, when in 2010, when I was running for uh, land commissioner, uh, you know, you get those calls, who you're going to vote for. She says, well, I'm voting all Democrat except for one race, my grandson. So that tells you a little bit, you know, we, everyone was raised traditional Democrats, but when I was, became old enough to make my own political decisions, uh, our beliefs aligned with the Republican Party. You know, uh, kind of like Reagan said, you know, the, he didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democrat Party left him. And that's what happened here in Arkansas. Uh, I ran as a Republican primarily because I'm pro-life above all of the, flat, that's at the top. And Republican Party is still the party that includes God in their platform. If you go to a Lincoln Day dinner, they still say the prayer, they still stand and, 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 and you know, 
pledge allegiance to the flag, and that's why uh, I'm a Republican. Does every does uh, is there any party that has the uh, uh, you know their hand on the the exact answer to every problem? No. But the party, when you go and vote partisan, R or D, that R or D gives you insight into at least what the core beliefs of that individual has. And so that is why Arkansans made that shift starting in 2010. I rode the first Republican wave uh, in 2010. And as you know, the state continually turned red and now it's red pretty much you know, everywhere. So uh, yes, I'm a Republican. And I will always be a Republican unless the party leaves me. And then uh, we'll address that later. Thank you. Thank you for that, Commissioner Thurston. Now the second question will also be addressed towards you, so you may. <coughs> what is your view on issue two, making voter ID a constitutional amendment? And how do you propose to address those that believe that this suppresses certain voters? Yes, I am 100% against, uh, not against for voter ID. Um, you can't even get on an airplane. You can't write a check. Uh, you can't open a checking account. Just the basic things in life that we do without having an ID. Um, you know, voter fraud takes place in two, primarily, in two primary spots, registration and at the poll. Voter ID will more than likely eliminate voter fraud at, at, on election day I dare say probably 99%. At registration, I would like to see uh, a law implemented kind of like Kansas has, where you have to prove citizenship. Why is that? Because now when you register, you, 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 all you have to have is your driver's license or the last four digits of your social. Well, you know, a non-citizen can have a driver's license. And in one particular county, I was told by someone in the courthouse, and I'll, I won't say the county for, to protect them, but someone who was not a citizen voted in six elections before they found out. One illegal vote cancels out another's legal vote. You know, elections are the most important thing that uh, government does. You can have our form of government without roads. You can have our form of government without health care. You can have our form of government even without education, this beautiful facility that we're in. But you cannot have our form of government without elections, meaning that elections are the most important thing that government does. And so I'm going to take voter fraud very seriously, prosecute it when it is uh, noticed, and support the counties at the county level, letting the county clerks, the election commissioners, poll workers know that someone in Little Rock has their back and supports them when voter fraud takes place. Thank you, Commissioner. Representative Drown, what is your view on issue two, making voter ID a constitutional amendment? And how do you propose to address those who believe that this suppresses certain voters? Well, first of all, as a legislator, I have been a co-sponsor of those bills. Um, I have actually sat in the committee that made sure that uh, issue two moved forward to be voted on by the House. So I am a firm uh, believer that we need voter ID. Uh, this our form of government here, the very basis of, for who we are, is, uh, is our ability to vote. I can tell you after having traveled the world in some of the worst places imaginable, that those people risk their lives to vote on a daily basis, or to vote whenever it comes time, just to have a voice in the direction that their governments go. So in this state, it is very important that we move forward in regards to uh, voter ID, and I would encourage everyone to vote for that um, on the ballot. When, it, when they go to the polls. As for how would I address those who, who I guess you said contradict or think that uh, it's a bad idea? Yes, sir. To me, anyone who would be against voter ID is trying to figure out how to game the system. I don't understand. I've never had a problem going showing up at the polls when my neighbor across the street is the poll worker and she's making me stand there and she's, as she's looking at my driver's license and she's addressing who I am, where I live, so on and so forth. Sure, it may be a, a slight inconvenience, but our system, our electoral system in this country is that important. As a Green Beret, as a man who's fought for this system, who's watched our men and women give their lives for this system, 
why, why is it that much to ask, so much to ask that we, uh, that we show our ID when we show up to vote? And with that, I'll you. Representative Drown, you may remain standing here at the podium for your closing statement. You have two minutes. 30 years of my adult life, since I was 17 years old, I've been serving the people of this state and nation. When it comes to elections, I'm the subcommittee chairman for elections. I've been working hand in hand with the Secretary of State's office on issues such as voting equipment, trying to come up with creative ways to help them uh, fund that equipment because the uh, revenues are not there in the state coffers. When it comes to um, security of the Capitol grounds, once again, my military experience comes into play. As a Green Beret, being able to secure something that sits on 25 acres like your Capitol does that encompasses your entire state government is something that's second nature to us. I'm the only one that has the experiences for this. In the 21st century, we've talked a lot about the electoral system here. We currently have foreign intelligence agencies that are trying to and have infiltrated voter rolls across this country. Last year, the Department of Homeland Security showed up at the Secretary of State's office wanting to work on getting the clearances needed so that they could share that information with our state officials in the Secretary of State's office. They've currently been working since the fall to get those clearances, the clearances needed to see that sensitive and classified information. I currently have those clearances. The day that I show up for office and swear in is the day I pick up the phone and start, start the dialogue to formulate a plan with our federal agencies to help us better protect our voter rolls. And finally, as a small business owner of 15 years, I um, helped it, uh, vote in the and approve the, uh, the business portal in 2015. And it's something that for our small business owners in this state, for our veterans looking into getting into small business ownership and anyone else to include our banking industry, the, the business portal is going to streamline how, how business is done in this state, let our small business owners focus on uh, the bottom line instead of worrying about the red tape. And with that, my name's Trevor Drown. I'm running for Secretary of State, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Commissioner well, Thurston, you may now make your closing yeah. statement. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having us. And um, regardless of, you know, your political flavor, you know, this is still the greatest nation in the world. You know, that we can come here as free people, share ideas, you know, and share plans and so forth, and then the people get to choose. And so it's been an honor to be a part of this process. Some things I want to focus on as Secretary of State, like I said, voter fraud is going to be at the top of the list. Um, the redistricting process, it will take place in 2021. This will be the first time, assuming Republicans remain uh, in control, this will be the first time that Republicans have drawn the line since Reconstruction. So there's a lot at stake. When I look at redistricting, I want to see lines that are fair, that make sense to the public, that are fair to the public, not necessarily to any, any particular party, but fair to the public. And I want to see lines that coordinate with the county. Part of the reason these older voting machines have trouble uh, keeping up, so to speak, is because of the multiple ballot styles, the multiple ballot splits. Um, we don't have time to go into all my plans on finding the funding for uh, the voting equipment, but we're going to open it up for bidding, the bidding process once again. Either that, find money within my own budget, or I'm going to camp out on the governor's steps because elections are the most important part of what government does. Redistricting, voter fraud, and, um, you know, this particular race, this is a partisan race, and Democrats are going to be coming after this seat, primarily because uh, they're going to be, they want a seat at the table in redistricting. I'm the only candidate that has won two statewide general elections, which I believe gives me the best advantage going into the general to win as a Republican. And in this particular race, we are running for a constitutional office, and I'm the only candidate that has actually run a constitutional office. Thank you. Thank you, candidates.